Keeper Jason Miller here with Miller Honey Farms. Today, the thing I want to talk to you about are pumps, syrup pumps. Uh, for a long time, we've been using trash pumps, um, you know, Honda two inch trash pumps pumping from either a tote or a larger 500 gallon tank um, through a fuel hose, one inch fuel hose to a, um, you know, a regular fill spout, uh, filling in hive feeders. For a long time, this has had a number of drawbacks. One of those is the need to constantly carry around fuel, uh, cold syrup, very hard to pump, the maintenance of the pumps, and the space requirements. They're so big, exhaust, heat, um, they have a number of drawbacks, but they're kind of the best that, that we've uh, had over the years. Lately, I've been experimenting with electric pumps. Can we find something that has the pressure and the capacity, the gallons per minute required to pump uh, syrup and particularly when that syrup is cold or if you're wanting to pump something a little bit thicker high fructose corn syrup uh, We typically purchase sucrose uh, and so only 66% solids So it's a much thinner blend pumps a lot nicer, but um, I know a lot of people like to buy the the fructose high corn syrup uh, Blends and those are typically thicker with a higher percent of solids. So um, Again on a cold day with a thick syrup. It can really be a bear uh, getting your your gas pump started on, on the electric side, generally they don't have the oomph, the, the volume uh, to push that, that thick of a product through a hose that, you know, maybe as long as 30, 40 feet long to reach um, beehives. You, you lose quite a bit of pressure over the length of the hose. So um, my first version was a, was a SureFlow um, pump. I think it was about a 10 gallon per minute electric pump. Had a number of advantages but it just simply did not provide the volume. Um, very small plastic, um, 12 volt pump. It was really convenient because when you shut off your feed hose, the pump itself would kick out. And so it wouldn't be constantly drawing or deadheading the pump uh, when you weren't pumping syrup. You know, when you're going from hive to hive or from drop to drop, um, you weren't, uh, you know, using up the, the electricity, uh, draining your battery or deadheading your pump and, and wearing it out. So that was a really slick feature of, of that unit. But, you know, I had three quarter inch inlet and outlet and, uh, and it just did not have the volume. It was rated at, I think, about 10 gallons per minute. Um, but again, that's pumping water and not accounting for a long restrictive hose. I, I think we really need to, you know, to be able to compete with our gas pumps, uh, those typically fill a feeder in about five seconds. So you're somewhere between the five and 10 second. Um, range is is where I'd like to be on filling a one gallon feeder. So if we run that out, um, that's about six at the low end, six gallons per minute. And at the high end, uh, somewhere in the 12 to 15 gallon per minute um, range to really make it compete uh, with our gas units. So um, today I'm kind of trying out version uh, two uh, of the pumps. I should mention that uh, I also tried out a sure no, a uh, fill right uh, fuel pump, uh, 20 gallons per minute, uh, the 4200 series fill right. It's a high flow, 12 volt um, pump, and uh, and it was phenomenal on the flow, just really good. Uh, it also had the suction to drop it, mount right to the top of the of a tote, for example. It was really a slick solution. The problem is they're not designed for a water-based material, and so. Uh, inside is all cast metal that corrodes very quickly um, once you get a little bit of corrosion in there the impeller doesn't spin anymore and the whole thing freezes up so really easy to work on um, with the fill right very easy to access very economical to purchase um, great output capacity great pressure um, but simply does not have the reliability of the longevity that that we need um, having to lube that up and clean it out after every uh, every time you use it is, is not not feasible. So um, today I'm going to be trying out version three. Uh, this is a high pro pump. This is a roller pump. So a 12 volt uh, high pro. I believe it's a four roller roller pump hooked up to a tote. I'll show you a little bit uh, what it looks like and then we'll get out here and, and try feeding some bees and uh, and see um, if it if it works. I, I think it's rated to uh, 12 gallons per minute. Um, but we'll have to see with the syrup what that actually equates to. And uh, you know, it's, it's all 
uh, fine in the spec books, but when you get out to the real world and you're pumping a different material with a different length hose and a different viscosity, um, you know, those ratings kind of go out the window and, and uh, we often find that what you thought would work uh, won't. So let's go out and, uh, and first I'll show you the pump and then we'll go feed some bees. So here's my tote, uh, you know, your standard tote in the bed of the truck here only filled about a quarter of the way full um, running a two inch line over to this pump now this worries me here because you can see how small these inlets and outlets are um, they're only half inch so uh, excuse me three quarter inch so what's the likelihood you know that we're going to get the volume that that concerns me uh, like I mentioned it's a high pro four roller it's got a really beefy electric motor on it um, I ran some electrical here to have a nice on off switch for it okay nice and quiet and then on the electrical side what I like to use is a winch connector so you might be familiar with these like a Warren winch we put these on the back of all of our trucks and uh, you can use this of course to operate winches um, we have tilt deck trailers that, that we'll plug into here uh, and then you know it's just the perfect um, high current uh, connection there you know, given the, the current demands of these pumps, you really could run it off your seven pin over here. Um, you've got a constant feed in there. Um, but you know, if you deadhead this pump, uh, it can drop to 30 amps. You can see right there. And uh, typically you've got about a 30 amp fuse. And so you could blow that fuse and, and then you're in there trying to replace fuses and, and I don't want to deal with that. So um, better just to hook it up to something I know can supply the output. Uh, for the test, I just have, uh, you know, your standard gasoline fill. Um, works really good for, uh, for filling in high feeders. And, uh, and then let's uh, get out there. So here we are with the pump running, feeding. Uh, you can see the in high feeders there. And uh, boy, that performance is, is not, not real good. Not what I was hoping for. Now this is kind of a worst case scenario. It's been really cold here. The low was 28 last night. And so this syrup is very cold. The syrup, uh, it's just early in the morning. It's only about 40 degrees out here. But you can see how long uh, this has taken to fill a, fill a feeder. We're probably talking 20 seconds, 30 seconds, I guess. So just not gonna be a viable solution. Um, it's nice and quiet. When I shut off the, you know, it just keeps running along here and doing its thing. But uh, like I mentioned, you know, it'll pump real, real fast here once it's built up, built up some pressure uh, from sitting. You know, if I just let her not go for a minute and then I hit it, yeah, I, I get a bit of a flow, but. Uh, but once it's kind of going, it's just too slow. So search continues to find that, uh, that electric pump that's going to meet our demands. And uh, I've never seen a beekeeper using one. So if you've used one that works uh, to pump the kind of volume I'm talking about, I'd love to hear from you.